I'm Natasha Hope Simpson. I'm an artist living here in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. I graduated from NASCAD last year. In November of 2013, I was given an artistic opportunity to work with figurative sculpture on my own body after I got hit by a car and lost my left leg below the knee. I was invited by Professor Barbara Lounder to attend her introduction to forms class. I met Natasha at the class. She came in and she didn't talk about the loss of her leg. She talked about this negative space that she now had on her body and the process she was going through to, to design it. Gregor and NASCA University are looking at expanding into 3D printing. And I said, you know, wouldn't it be nice to feature a student with a design background who is anxious to rehabilitate not only herself, but to use design in prosthetics. And he uh, went up to me and he said, uh, I've been working with this guy, Kendall Jodry. You really need to connect with him. I think it'd be a great conversation to talk about what Kendall's trying to do with his company, Thinking Robot Studios, and the future of, of prosthetic design and, and manufacture. We just jumped in uh, without even thinking about it. We wanted to do custom uh, prosthetics to restore people's personality and add design flair to it. I really didn't know what to think when they said we we're going to try and, and make this prosthetic leg within a two week time period, but I thought it was pretty exciting. And when we decided that this was actually going to happen, we had 15 days. I thought about femininity in a way of using patterns. I ended up finding a pattern online that I liked from an artist in New York, Melissa Angie. She had made these masks that had a very beautiful design printed on them, and they were 3D printed, so I knew that the design would format with the software that we were using. The first time I heard about Natasha was when Kendall Judry of Thinking Robot Studios reached out to me. When he told me her story, I, I just had to uh, help in some way if I could. What 3D printing allows us to do is engineer those panels, those decorative panels that go outside, apply the imaging, and then print them with very little labor in between those steps. Projet 7000 was the printer that uh, created the eight individual parts. Again, we had seven days, but literally they only had five to seven days from Boston to here. 3D Systems uh, really pulled out all the stops to deliver that product to us, and, uh, and coincidentally, it, it arrived in the worst snowstorm in the year, so. 17 days was the start to finish. Scanning, accuracy checks and balances, CAD file preparation, production of the eight individual elements, and then the, the resultant assembly and fitting. It's one thing to see something on the screen and to see the look on Natasha's face when she saw it for the first time was, uh, made it all worth it. I thought the prototype was really beautiful and also that it really reflected what Natasha had been saying all along about the kinds of things that interest her. Our mission was to have something better than a prototype, but you know, given 15 days, a prototype is what we were able to get. It more than met my expectations. Like I said, I was new to the world of prosthetics, so when I saw the actual piece, it was really exciting to see what's possible. One of the real dividends that came from democratizing 3D scanning and 3D printing is that everyone can become a designer when it comes to a product that's very personal to them. Inviting people to co-design their own product and make something that's not only functional mechanically and biomechanically, but also very personal, very meaningful, because this should be as much art and design as it is pure mechanics. And it's really through 3D printing and 3D scanning that we can go down that path. She spoke at the Seaport Maker Symposium. One of the things I thought was just so compelling was her comment where she said to the audience, you know, when I get up in the morning, I can decide what leg I'm gonna wear. Natasha is one of those people that probably would have uh, at least half a dozen iterations that she might choose to wear at any particular day of the week. Before 3D printing, that was just not possible.